So viewers of my channel may remember that last year I made a video about making square holes in work pieces. Maybe you have a square shaft and you need to drive a gear. Sometimes a square hole can work really well. Now in that video I listed a few options including hand filing, rotary broaching and machine shaping which have worked well for me. But I did leave out EDM. Mostly because it's not my type of music but also because electrical discharge machining is well expensive and I don't have one in my workshop. I'm not exactly sure how much the going rate for an EDM machine is, but I suspect that it's a lot more than pretty much anything in my workshop. I also managed to leave out just normal broaching, mostly because I didn't have a press at the time, but now that I do, well, let's talk about that. Now, broaching a square hole shouldn't be too different to broaching a keyway, in the sense that we need to make a cutter with the desired profile and we need to add cutting geometry so that we can cut that profile. It works with keys, so it should work with a square. However, with this project, I want to try something a little bit different because with all the brooches I've made so far, I've been pushing them into the workpiece to do the cutting. And that can be a bit scary at the best of times because even with a small amount of uneven pressure or flex in the press, the cutter will bend and it will want to snap. And because we are dealing with two plus tons of force, it is going to snap if we don't back off the pressure. And the best case scenario there, if you do break it, is you're simply left with an 80 plus dollar tool that's broken. Worst case scenario is you can get injured by it. So as an of experiment in this video, instead of push broaching, I'd like to see what can be achieved on this small press by pull broaching, which is exactly what it sounds like. Instead of pushing the brooch into the workpiece, we pull it through and that should have a less chance of breaking. First things first though, we need to make the brooch. So what I have here is a piece of 10mm square O1 tool steel, which should be good enough for the job. It's in its annealed state so we can machine it and then we can harden it. So the first thing we need to do is machine in the cutting geometry on the lathe and that's going to present us with, well, another problem because I still don't have a forge or chuck for the big lathe. Now I could probably pull out the old small lathe because that does have a forge or chuck but instead I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to put the old forge or chuck into the big chuck and see how that works. Now I've done my fair share of sketchy setups over the years, but something like this, I don't know, I just feel a bit uneasy with it. However, I have seen this setup done in proper machine shops, so I'm just going to take it easy and hope for the best. So the first thing I'll do is machine in the top end shank. I now need to cut the recesses for the teeth, which I'll do with a parting blade. Okay, so that setup definitely wasn't rigid enough, so I went and put it back in the three jaw chuck. So with that done, I now need to cut the teeth and clearance. So I'll set up the compound to cut 10 degrees of clearance and each tooth will cut about 0.1 millimeters of material to form the full profile. Now at this point, I do want to point out very quickly that this brooch is far less long than most commercially made pool brooches, which can easily come in at more than a meter long. This will obviously reduce the chip load of tooth and the force on the cutter, but unfortunately, I am limited with the space that I have on the fly press, and ultimately, that was what set the length for the brooch. 
However, I'm still interested to see what this press can do, and I'm pretty much certain that I can get some good results in aluminium. With the brooch now done and looking really nice so far, we now need to think about how we can hold it in the press to pull it. And I think the simplest method would be some type of locking pin. Alright, so that's the brooch, that's the attachment that goes into the fly press, and that's the locking pin. And obviously that locks everything in place. With that all done, the final thing left to do is harden it. I'm going to quickly give it a coating of flux just to prevent any oxide building up on the part and I can then remove any flux with some sodium hydroxide. And that is the brooch done. Obviously tempered back to mid 50s Rockwell C hardness. Nothing else left to do but see if it works. Okay, so that was probably to be expected. I'm sure everyone else saw that coming, so um, let me try a better method of holding everything in place. I think some sort of cover plate that goes on top of it should work quite well. Okay, so that went a lot easier than I was expecting. You know, this isn't the nicest aluminium alloy that I've ever worked with. I think this is 5005 and it tends to leave quite a lot of burrs. So give me a second to knock off the burrs. Okay, so that's definitely a lot better than it was before. Overall, what can I say? I don't know, that hole looks to be pretty square. So the real test is, I have a piece of 10mm keyway steel, which is made to some pretty tight tolerances. So let's see how it goes in this hole. And that is a really good fit. It's nice and tight, and there's no wobble or play. Overall, you know, I'm pretty impressed. You know, really I wasn't expecting all that much from this type of setup, but um, it worked pretty well. The next thing I want to do is take a look at broaching splines, maybe some sort of fine tooth splines, but that's a project for another day. And that's about it for now. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you very much for watching, and I guess, see you next week.